bumps and bruises, scratches and scrapes, some of the ingredients that a good life makes. But sorrows become success. And as we aim for the top, we will pause if we must, but we will never stop. Welcome to Sim Soul Sessions. Hello and welcome to Sim Soul Sessions, a safe space to share your stories. Tonight we talk to medical doctor, well really, OBGYN and former Miss World, Miss Jamaica World, Sarah Lawrence Lewis. She hasn't really told her story like this before and believe me, it's going to leave you very, very inspired. So, hi. Hi. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm to have you in the space. It is a pleasure, pleasure, pleasure to be here. So look here, we planning and God planning. Look at Conspiring that. Conspiring because the day we called you, tell me what was happening then. So day. it was, so anybody who knows obstetrics and gynecology know that there's a crop season and we're in the middle of the crop season in October. The crop season is where? Crop season where it's holy for baby burning. <laughs> holy, holy. I did not know It that is wonderful, but it is tiring. So it was the morning of a delivery and I'm at Andrews Memorial Hospital delivering a baby. And I look up and I see same soul sessions on. And there was just a little quickening in my spirit. So this is weird, never, never happened before. And it's not the first time I'm seeing the show. Mm -hmm. But I said, okay, that's nice, all right. Kept moving and within hours, there it was. Your producer's reaching out to be a part of this series. So honestly, at this time of life, I, you know, I'm so busy, I'm so tired, I have so much on my plate but I've learned to never, ever, ever ignore that quickening in the spirit. Mm -hmm. So here I am being obedient and here ready to speak with you and to share. My heart is full. <laughs> Your story is really inspiring, Sarah, but before now you've been getting a lot of calls to speak about it in depth. Is, that, is it that you weren't ready or you just um, didn't think the timing was right? I'm not, I'm not certain, probably it really was a timing thing. Um, or things just never really pan out to a discussion about many things in the past. Mm -hmm. We kind of just very much in the present, which I appreciated, you know. Um, but I also, if you also know me, I'm quite protective yeah. of my space. inner space, my, my circle, my family, my personal aspirations, everything about me that's super personal and I hold on to it tight. So a lot of it is intentional. Mm. So sometimes I would even go off the radar and you will hear much going on. And that's, that's intentional for, you know, restoring and keeping my mental space and so. So, um, yeah, that's, so it was part intentional, part um, happened by chance, mm -hmm. but yeah. Yeah. So, so um, a lot of the folks who are watching would know you as a former Miss Jamaica World, you actually went to Miss World and you placed for it. So you did us really proud there. And your life took a turn for the better. <laughs> and then you thought for the worst. But when you sit and you look back on your life, everything happened the way it was supposed to happen and all the lessons and all the, the learnings you've taken. And you're, you are in such a good place now. Boy, I am in such a blessed place. I'm in such a graced place. And you can't truly speak to God's goodness and God's favor and God's grace without going through some quote unquote challenging times and or unexpected times. Cause truly they were they weren't anticipated and um, it came with its challenges. But having an anchor in the Lord and mm -hmm. having seen his hand and allowing him to play out what could have been a potentially terrible situation or sensationalized situation or, you know, a, a truly unexpected situation and turn it into the most beautiful thing was something I would never trade, mm -hmm. you know? And it makes me see God in a way that I probably wouldn't have seen if I didn't experience mm -hmm. it. His beauty, the way he just does things in his own way. And the 
everything that I've gone through and continue to go, go through, I use every single day. So I honestly just stand in awe of him. I'm in a, in a place now that if something happens that throw me off, I'm like, all right, this is for a reason. God, how we're going to remix this, how we're going to do it, how we're going to use it. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, because you said even while it was unexpected and you didn't plan for it, you know it was a part of his plan, so he must have He known. knew already. But so that is really the, the, the crux of the matter, you know. You can't surprise God. You can't surprise him. He knew. He knows. Yes, he may be disappointed. Yes, he may be hurt by things that we do, but he knows already he's omniscient and omnipotent mm -hmm. and he can use every single thing. So it's really coming out of a situation and looking at it from the perspective of if you're aligned with a God who knew this already, he already knows he can use this. He already knows how it's going to play out in life mm -hmm. and literally just clinging on to him till you see it because enough times you want to see it right now. Yeah. You're like, why no? Why yeah. this? Why that? But if you just be still literally and say okay god and reconcile things too because you can't be very airy about things if there are things to seek forgiveness about or unpack or you know offload you really need to address those things in each season of your life but once you've done that you have to walk in the purpose yeah whatever that is right and we're going to talk about what that purpose is a little later but let's start at the beginning you you were raised in an anglican home yes. um you know, a structure that you said you, you learned to love when you became a teenager. You love the, the predictability of it. You love the connection that you were able to forge um, with God. And eventually you left here, you went to university abroad, and you said you strayed a little bit because, you know, being raised in that structure, um, w when you left, you were like, mm, I want to, I hadn't, exp you hadn't experienced the world. Yes, but straying not from church. Right. I always loved God. I felt like if I had, this overwhelmingly personal and sweet relationship with God. And I never disliked it. I didn't want to run away from it. I just probably wanted to experience it in a different mm -hmm. way. I only knew what I knew. And um, I was like, okay, there's a lot more denominations, a lot more ways to worship and a lot more ways to have it. So immediately once I got there, I knew church was a part of my routine, but was it going to be an Anglican church? Which Maybe one? not. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. So that is where the, the string and the variation came in. But it wasn't ever it, my heart's desire to stray mm -hmm. away from God. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my, that relationship with him that I had as a little girl is probably something that I wish for everybody because I, I felt like he just loves me so much. He loves me and his love for me is never ending. And I, there's this like love affair that we had with each other, which when you start to be with other people, you realize he loves everybody, but it's okay. When it comes to me and God, he wants us to understand that there's this unilateral love and relationship. So I went with that. I plan to take it with me. But as you say, yes, I did kind of try to jump up church and went to this church and that church. But I came back full circle to the mm -hmm. Episcopalian church mm -hmm. while I was away in college, which is the Anglican equivalent in the States. Mm -hmm. And then you, you did your bit in school. You came home. Um, still an introvert, you said. You described yourself on, on, the, uh, on our call as a country bumpkin <laughs> who, who never <laughs> even hold, or no heels, no, not even a stick or lipstick. And you came back um, with all intentions of going to med school. Mm -hmm. um, you, were th you were thrust into pageantry on the advice of a, a good friend of yours, yes, Terry Carell. Terry Carell. Right? <laughs> um, who encouraged you to, to, to jump in. Well, you know, she wasn't even a good friend. That's how God worked yes, with you too, met because her. I would have had other friends that would say it, and I'm like, that's so kind, thank you very much. But she was a complete stranger to me. But I would have walked on the street and be like, you know, you remind me of that Miss Jamaica who is, because she was, would, be, would have been raining at the time that I returned. Met her. She said, you know what? We're going to see Mr. James tomorrow. And the rest was history. So thrust indeed. <laughs> yeah, the rest was history. Um, yes. Sarah went away. She did us proud. And um, she came back home. And that's where um, the would-be bombshell was revealed. And we're going to talk to her about what that bombshell was and how she maneuvered that minefield and is now at a place where she calls it all joy. All joy. More with Sarah Grace after the break. Right, back with this lovely lady on our set. So we're talking about you heading into pageantry. You had to run up a very steep curve because 
between the day you won and the day you left to represent us on the world stage, it was a 10 day window. 10 days. 10 days. 10 days for someone who did not know how to put on their makeup, yeah. who did not really know how to walk in heels, who didn't know much about the pageant world at all. And really, in retrospect, it was really God. Either God <laughs> put filters over the judges' eyes or just gave me complete grace and favor throughout the whole thing. And I would have to think it is just not because he wanted me to win Mr. Jamaica, but he wanted a platform for his glory. Mm. That is just how I look at things. Frame, frame things because God working everything out for his glory and his good. So I trust him. It wasn't on my radar. It wasn't on anybody's radar, really. Not, not my family, not anyone. Yeah, because yeah. your dad had a hard time with it. Your dad <laughs> stopped talking to you for the period that you were... Just in the duration of the pageant. I, I don't even want to belabor it because I know that it was just really that he didn't want... He's so pretty. He's such a girl dad. Mm -hmm. he, he I love really those. and truly is a girl dad. So I think truly he just didn't want me to be out there for anybody to have anything negative to say or tear me down. So the duration of the pageant, he wasn't very pleased, but I tr Simone, you see when they said Miss Jamaica World 2006, he was the first person I see I saw fly <laughs> up out of the chair and I'll never forget that. Oh. You know, so I knew it wasn't from a place of, mm -hmm. you know, anything just negative, protect just you. protection. But yeah. even you had to adjust because initially when you thought about wearing a swimsuit on stage, you oh, were like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but you but you did it. Yeah, you did it, and you went, and you you did as proud as you said. You came forth in the contest, and you came home um, to all this newfound fame. You know, everybody now knew it, your name. It uh, was a it was for an introvert, which I say I truly am. It was a lot, but it was I, because I knew it was for a bigger thing. It, I try not to let it overwhelm me. And I said, okay, this is for a purpose. So everywhere I go, I want to show the same grace that was bestowed upon me, the same love, the same energy, the same happiness. So it didn't, it, I guess it would become overwhelming when I reach home and I'm like, whoa, wow, that mm -hmm. was a lot. Mm -hmm. But in the moment, I was given everything I needed right. to do what I needed to do. So that in and of itself was supernatural because yeah. I did not have enough training or, you know, bandwidth. <laughs> to do had, it naturally. You obviously had something. I guess. You were blessed with... You it was there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> obviously you had something, girl. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a qualitative thing. You, you radiated. Oh, and yes. So that's, that's what it was. Um, so shortly after you came home, uh -huh. you found out that you were pregnant. Yes, yes, yes. So I think... How many months into your reign? I, it would be about... Five or six months in, five or six months in. And of course, no, mm. put the pageantry aside, put the load of the social stresses of that, just my family alone. It's not, it was never <laughs> on my radar or my family's radar, you know, having a child out of wedlock and so much more now to have to do this publicly, you know, the definitely the majority of my emotions in that time was steeped in having to put them through that because I felt like if I have to face something, I can do it, I will find my way through it, but everybody had to go through it, all my friends, all my family members, and that was a lot. That was a lot. Um, of course, I'd be regretting, oh, why am I going to take up this thing? Because it would have been bad already. Without, without it, not, without the fame. Okay, but now, now that it's there, it's now so much more. Mm -hmm. And then I just had some really good people around me mm -hmm. that quickly just pulled me. Including your mom. My mommy, yeah. That was a manifestation and my auntie Grace, of God's love. Literally. Yeah. Because I, I thought, you know, I don't want to disappoint them. I didn't want to hurt them. I didn't want to embarrass them. And she literally... She acknowledged it. So it wasn't um, totally... Your mom said she already knew. Yeah, she did say that. <laughs> I wonder if she remembers her. saying that. She did. She did. She said, she went, hmm, okay. Well, the Lord was preparing me. I, I think I already knew whatever. And it, I, I don't know if it's a mommy thing or if it is just a God preparing her mm -hmm. thing. But she, where, where I met her on that day telling her, was far already down the line. Mm -hmm. So she was exactly what I needed. I didn't have to process the 
absolute shock and disappointment and everything with her there. She literally was where she was. She was clear on how she felt. She expressed it, but this is what we're dealing with. We're dealing Let's with go. it. Let's go. Yeah. Um, not so much love from some other folks, though. I mean, you would read stuff in the paper. You would see such stuff on TV. You would... You you told me about uh, one day in the supermarket when you overheard people talking about the fact that Miss Jamaica, Miss Jamaica pregnant. But this editorial that you read about how, you know, you would really never amount to anything. And yeah, it, just going to be another unwe what? Workless. Workless baby mother or something like that. Um, but you know, Sim, even saying it, I don't even feel like, woe is me, you know. It kind of, I had a force feel around me in the protection from God, and I don't want to sound lofty because people watching this who probably don't even know about that probably like, Lord God, she's talking about God again. But for someone to literally be in the midst of a situation where you don't want to be in, yeah. it's not like you're feeling wrong and strong and you, you know, you, you didn't want to be here, you didn't plan for it. You're dealing with interpersonal things, familial things, national level things. Um, it should be overwhelming, right? But something about the grace of God in my life. Peace. The peace of God in my life. In that time, I can't explain it. That was supernatural. I don't even think I have that level of peace right now. I told you. Because if, if it is that those things were being said and I literally could hold firm to, well, this is it. I am, you know, I trust the Lord and... I have acknowledged whatever there is to acknowledge and I truly believe that I'll get through on the other side mm -hmm. wonderful. You know, I just kind of navigated it with that faith, you know, and sometimes you have to use some of the negative things as a little motivation too, you know, um, because when I read it, I kind of read it on behalf of all the baby, unwed baby mother. Yes. That is what kind of niggled me, not me him talking about because he doesn't know me. He doesn't know my potential to be. Because it was, the article actually was speaking to the fact that I'm delusional because I think I'm going to go to med school and this and that. But what's going to happen is that I'm going to be another this, that, that. And I said, no. Oh, dear. I said, no. Mm -hmm. So I, the, initially, that now became a motivation because there are a lot of women out there that are unwed mm -hmm. and have a child. Mm -hmm. And have all sorts of aspirations and things to do. And I wasn't saying, oh, I'm going to champion their cause. But I'm just like, I have to do this. I have to do this yeah. for some people who speak so carelessly about other people's lives, you know? So I wouldn't say I came around on a war path, everything that I saw, I was ready to, to build up a case against because I was somewhat protected, but I knew there were some things that motivated me mm. to say, no, you can't, you can't dictate my story in any way, shape or form. Did you relinquish the crown? So how that part actually went, I relinquished, mm -hmm. I, I went in, it wasn't a thing like it was a so, 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 so and find out and once we found out, it was very clear to me as my personal decision what I would do, you know. And so uh, I got together, met with Mickey Horton James was the pageant director and coordinator. I met with, I, I told the media houses because I'm like, this is just better mm -hmm. this way. And I actually contacted Miss World, Miss Julia Morley, to me now, who is the head of the whole Miss World organization and the fact that I'm reigning holding the Miss World Caribbean Continental Crown, it yeah. means like I have to yeah. because if I was called upon for anything, yes. this would be important. Understood. So in relinquishing, the most unexpected thing came out in her releasing a statement from the Miss World organization level saying, we're not taking it back. <gasps> what? We are not taking it back. <laughs> oh and God. at this time, people were squabbling. She fixed get back the crown. She must do this. She must do that. And they're like, I don't really know what you guys are doing on that level. But we're not, we're taking, not it taking it back. Boy. I'm being reinforced that way. I never, I wasn't looking for it. I wasn't seeking for any sort of um, anything from them at that level. But getting it really, really felt good. Gosh, we're going to mm. take a break. Um, when we come back with Sarah, we're going to talk about um, how she, she proved the naysayer is wrong. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> All right, we are back with Sarah Grace, everybody. Um, about to talk about when you headed into med school. Yeah. Before we get there, though, um, there were people who were actually ad advising you to, to not have your child. 
um, which thankfully she didn't listen to because you now he's such a blessing. But you went on to have your baby boy. You literally like gave birth like two days. Saturday. And you went to school Tuesday. Eh? Yeah. What do you mean? What do you mean? Because yes. you were going to take some time off. I was. But God bless Dr. Charmaine Mitchell, who is like, has been such a motivator from day one of med school. She was just my regular OB at the time. She didn't even know I wanted to do OBGYN. And I said to her, I said, you know, just on going through, it's like the end part. And I'm like, um, you know, I got in, I'm going to take a year off. She's like, you're going to take a year off? You're going to have the baby on Saturday. <laughs> I said, <laughs> You're going this to have, have the, the baby. baby on Saturday. So I, I saw her on a Tuesday. She said, you're having the baby on Saturday. This time I'm due about two weeks after. <laughs> and she's just like, yeah, you're going to go to school. You're going to go this. And she just, if I know her, you'd hear her. She was very matter of fact. This is how it's going to happen. And I literally just released and said, okay. So she, um, she, indu she induced you? Yes, I got induced. <laughs> It was term, it was time, I was ready. I mean, I was already even two centimeters. I was already gearing up, mm -hmm. so it wasn't anything reckless at all. Mm -hmm. But just God using even her, just because I didn't even have to verbalize it. I could have just gone, gone on my merry way. She probably wouldn't even see me back again because I probably wouldn't even have continued if the overwhelm of being a mom and yeah. everything had yeah. started outside of that, being in the school space. So literally, she just, she didn't even ask a question. She just said, no, you're having a baby Saturday. <laughs> As though... Either the Lord told her to say it or she just made up her mind on the spot. So, yes, I had him Saturday and I started school the Tuesday. The Monday was actually the orientation and my mom went, collected all the things. I mean, when I tell you, she village. just, yeah, my village just really stood up. And, you know, even I never missed a day. Mm -hmm. I literally went to so school. You, you would breast, you, you would go to car to breast. Initially, you. that was my first grand plan. <laughs> It's not a very good plan. The first couple of days, um, I went to the car and I breastfed or I pumped a little because it wasn't very long days mm -hmm. initially. But mm -hmm. then I said, OK, let me see where I can go and pump. And I kind of just figured it out as I went along. I, 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 I think I had to have it that way so I couldn't overanalyze it. Because if I overanalyzed it, and I, I would have found every reason why it couldn't work. Yes. And I literally was just like, boom, this is happening. I have to make it work. And I, I say, okay, this work, this didn't work. Let's go along this road. Let's not do this again. And just trial and error as I went. Through. I asked you what it was like to, to go through med school with a son. And you said to me, Simone, oh, that's all I know. Yeah. I don't know what it's like to not go to I don't. med school I with don't. a child. But when you had friends who were going home to, Take to a nap, rest, to come to back. Meet back at, that was me. And it was, once again, it's not always me. This is, I'm very cognizant of what my reality is mm. and it is not a comparison and that's never how it is in life you needed to do this I need to do that and literally that's how I made it through nobody I never felt as I had a handicap I never felt like I was more burdened than anyone else this is my reality I go home I get to spend some time with my son before mm -hmm. I go to study mm -hmm. not man I didn't get to sleep before I go that's not how it was so perspective really just that's so amazing you know governs how you get up, get through life. It's so true. Yeah. The, the lens you look at defines yes, everything. Definitely. And you say during that time, his purpose was even more revealed to you because he served as motivation. Because if he weren't there, for sure you would have probably just said. Oh my, so many times I'd have been like, okay, let me go to something else. Let me go host. Let me go, you know, do something else that was not my calling. But literally I said, no, I committed to this thing. It's me and this child, we're going to do this together. And he would just became my living, breathing motivation mm -hmm. every single day. Mm -hmm. yeah. And during that time, Sarah, you, had, you were motivating other people and you didn't even realize. Like you had people looking on and looking at how you were managing your situation. And you were inspiring them, people who were in your shoes. No, that to me is just the most <laughs> amazing or probably surreal part of it. The way God could orchestrate that you know, because I, that wasn't anywhere in my thoughts or saying, yeah, man, God can turn this around because somebody will see that. No, that wasn't it at all. And, you know, even being in subspecialty that I am in and now I see the purpose very every day, mm -hmm. all day. But before then, I'd get little glimpses of it. I remember being in a meat shop one day and a lady came to me and she's like, you know, 
I was considering this at that time of your life and I didn't do, you know, and I'm just like, wow, all of this heavyweight stuff that happened without even an actual interaction. But God would have caused a quickening in her heart watching what, what was going on and move in that way. And that was very beautiful to me um, to know that he was using me without even my consciousness of mm -hmm. it. Um, so that, that truly showed me another dimension of God too. You can't study him. Yeah. You can't study him. <laughs> I'm going to sex you. You're going to fail. It's for sure. Yeah. Um, so you say you always knew you wanted to get married, you wanted to have children. It happened with you in the wrong order, but it happened exactly how it was supposed to be. A different to. order. A different yeah, order. Yeah, a different order. Not so right. it's, it's so beautiful being in this position now. And it's something I always knew, even when it was out of order. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. So one, this, two, get married, three, have kids, this, that, that. So, but I probably had one, three, four, two, you know, but now I have all my numbers. I know. Nothing is missing. Nothing is lost. Whose number system was that anyway? Exactly right. <laughs> Guys, are you listening to this? I mean, it's so powerful to me because there's so many young women and men who just believe their life is over oh God. when they get this, what you called unexpected or inconvenient um, news. They're done. You thought for sure I can't go to med school again and I can't. Absolutely. And we're not going to negate that because that was real. Can I do this again? Not going to get married again. Not going this, not going that. You have to silence that voice. Because remember, there's a voice out there that continuously wants to just feed it that, feed it that, feed it that. But let me tell you something. What I learned in retrospect is that the voices that are against you are loud, but they're not as, as, the, as many as it seems mm -hmm. to be. Because now when I have the people, you know, I was I so proud of you. I so, well, I'm whispering it, yes, you know. <laughs> I'm never writing an article in the paper, but that's okay. You have to be grounded because if you care about all that other noisy things of the few, it can totally derail you. Ah, I just love this lady. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to come back with more on the other side. All right. Welcome back to the show, everybody. We we're just having a discussion off camera about, you know, about this culture we have in, in Jamaica where women get pregnant in church out of wedlock and we, we backbench them or we bring them to the altar and we take strip them out everything strip. publicly. And I mean, to each his own, you know, I'm not telling anybody how to run the church. I just kind of try to operate the way Jesus operates. What about grace though? Eh? And that is what, that's all. He, grace is supernatural, mercy is supernatural. Love, 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 love. There's not, that's not a loving move to me. That's a move for your pride and your church, and you don't want nobody to see that this person who was pregnant out of wedlock is holding a position in your church because it's a reflection of you and your church. But is it a reflection of how Jesus would have behaved? What would Jesus? What would have Jesus what done? Would Jesus do? um, one thing you told me when we were talking is that you are learning, or you have learned about how God restores. Yeah. Right. Um, you came through that situation with a, a testimony. And all sorts of doors started to open for you that you could not believe. Crazy. When I say crazy, I, the blessing alone of being in med school and being able to live out now, this dream in my heart of being a doctor, I'm like, God, I'm good. We finish med school and we do my little thing. But just thing after thing after thing, even, no, why, we, why am I even speaking to you right <laughs> now? You know what? You, he just continuously put me in a position of not, not embarrassing me and not putting me down and saying, you did this, shame on you. All endorsements. When I say, I remember I tell you I'm an introvert, you know, I've never once put out a resume to do anything. I've never once seeked out an advertising campaign. I've never once, done, but the grace of God, every single time I'm a little lay low, something just comes to me. Mm -hmm. And Part of me feel a little scared because I'm like, do I deserve this? Am I supposed to? And I was like, but if God give me the door, I'm going to walk through it, you know? And that was the way, I think that was his way of just keeping, reinforcing me and just saying, you know what, girl, I have you. I got you. No, but nobody can take this away because it's not man give you this. It is I, you know? So. <laughs> you met your husband after you, shortly after you had a discussion with God. <laughs> You're like, okay, God, you want me to be single? <laughs> 
Abby single, we'll you this. want me to be a nun? Uh, I'm going uh, there. Here he comes with a sense of humor again. Uh, what was it? It was May 8th and I met him June 15 or 16. He's Are gonna you fact serious? Check me. Yes, he's going to fact check me, but it was literally within weeks. I was like, I'm done. I don't, I'm not interested in dating, in this, in that. I just we focus on, you know, medicine. Had you been having child. bad experiences? Um, I, get, I wouldn't say terrible because I didn't, I don't have a history of many um, boyfriends mm -hmm. or anything like that. I just kind of know what I want. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not a don't play of anybody else who likes to date and they I'm just not interested. I don't like small talk. I don't like the, the little getting to know you thing and then you show me a facade and then I see the, I, mm -mm. I know if God have a husband for me, you know it's who. So just show me him, cause we talk. You yeah. understand? I don't really want to <laughs> make any bad decisions for myself. Just God, this is good. Um, This is what it is. And literally within weeks. And even me couldn't believe it. I was just like... Did you know when you met him that it was... No, absolutely know. not. Yeah. Not when I met him because it was... Mm, it was I, I was already in the space of letting go everything. Mm -hmm. And I, obviously, for God, that is where he needs me at all times. But I was already in that space where I'm like, I'm not interested. So when I came to him, I was just like, not interested. <laughs> Don't even... I'm not, you know, very... <laughs> rock and scott. So, you know, God have to drape me up sometimes, like humble thyself, right? So that's exactly how that went down. So I wasn't very interested, but I was open, you know? He hit some key fundamental things that I was looking for. Definitely not perfect. I'm not perfect mm -hmm. either, but we, yeah, he worked his way in with God's go ahead mm -hmm. every step of the way. And so you guys got married. Yes. You say you, you went to church, you prayed about your daughter even before she was born. Yeah. Um, and then your daughter was born and boom, you say God, it, it came your next test. But by that point, your faith was already so refined that you're like, okay, God, I'm giving this to you too. Yes. I mean, it co doesn't come without questions, you know, because I'm a human. So I don't want to portray this impossible I had questions. I was wondering, wow. So when she was born and she was ill, I was just like, what is this, God? Why? We prayed about this. This is, you know, we're in your will. We believe we're, we're supposed to be together. We believe she's supposed to be here. What is this? Why do we have to be here in the hospital and dealing with this, this illness that's going to be with her for her whole life? You know, God, it can't just fix. And it was a lot. But, you know, initially... In, you know, in a moment, God is like, you know, being a Christian, though, make it immune from hard things happening to you or bad things happening to you. That was a nice drape up, right? And also, I see, and it is abundantly clear with all that I deal with day to day, delivering babies, that babies are sometimes ill too. And I can say, listen, guys, I was there. I was there in the hospital. I know what it is like. That level of connection, that level of vulnerability, God allowed me to walk through and also to testify to people in that time because he really and truly was my strength. I had to take off the doctor hat because with the doctor hat on, you're thinking of every terrible thing that can happen. God. But I literally had to let it go, take it off. So sometimes even with you, if you come to me and see me as a patient, sometimes I have to take off the doctor hat and look at you with my spiritual eyes mm -hmm. and say, what is it, mm. God? Yeah, you came about this, but there's something else. And many, many persons who come and see me, we end up crying in their office because it was something else that God sent you here for. So literally, I, God shattered that faith max that I thought I had and took me to a place of just complete vulnerability mm -hmm. with him. Mm -hmm. um, bad things may happen, but he's my rock and he's going to get me through it. And I had to, things I was seeing with my eyes as a doctor, I had to let go and hold on to complete faith. Yeah. And that faith made me hear his voice, know his voice well. So if he says, okay, it's COVID, you're going to go off and open your business, it don't make sense in my eyes because it's not like I had this whole of money in savings and everything to, to make that move. But I know the voice and I know the voice well. So I just have to move with and it. And you did it. And I did. And now the success is... Yeah. yeah you're trying to cope now because you have so much to do. Um... <laughs> You know, she's been through so much. Good circle of support around her, though, and that's one of the reasons. She's sitting here, so it's time for some good vibes for Sara Grace. Go ahead, Laura. Good vibes. Sara, everything you've accomplished so far is a direct testimony to your commitment, your hard work, your determination to just be the best that you can be at everything that you do. Yes, we've watched you balance and move forward with motherhood, school, now starting your own business, marriage, just everything, and you do it so well, not effortlessly, but so well. 
We are so proud of you. You are pure of heart and a genuine soul, and we love you. Sir, you've been there every step of the way through my career, my life events, and I'm so grateful to have you in my life. Love you so much. I've always been amazed at the amount of friends that you have. You have friends from different corners of the world, friends that are you've known for your entire life, but you've always made everyone feel heard and everyone feel special. For me, my greatest memory that showed who you are was when I was contemplating running for head girl. I don't know if you remember, you were very perplexed by the contemplation. You're like, no, but we're doing this. Uh, you appointed yourself campaign manager. You rallied the forces and with an amazing group of ladies, I was elected. And I think that's who you are, Saro, to many people, but to me. Uh, a friend that when you need is there, a friend that you can count on, a friend that will walk beside you and encourage you but not leave you. Someone who knows when to push a little harder and when to step back. And to me, that's a true friend. And I treasure and I value our friendship. I like the fact that I can be myself around you without being judged. You're not just a boss, you're also a friend, mother, sister, and auntie to everyone that comes in contact with you. Your energy is unmatched. Hey Sarah, my twin, my doppelganger, my sister. I'm still convinced we're sisters. I'm still convinced we need to do that DNA test. Um, what do I say to someone who is not just breathtakingly beautiful but is actually the epitome of what her name signifies? Your middle name, Grace. I think over the years what has really stood out to me is the fact that you are resilient beyond measure. That you, even if your back is against the wall, even if pressure is mounting, you handle yourself with such grace and such calm and composure. And you treat those around you with, with grace as well. You are a woman of God, you are a praying woman, and one thing I love about you is the fact that you always approach everything with integrity and dignity. Just know that I'll always be here for you, no matter what, and I will always love you. Mwah. Just wanted to say how um, proud I am of you, of the woman you've become, of all you've accomplished so far. I know there is so much more to come, so continue to walk in your purpose, continue to walk in faith, and continue to walk with grace. I am so proud of you. I'm proud of who you have become. From the first day I met you, when I cared for you, delivered Zachary and then Karis, you know, you've just outdone yourself. I like your professionalism. I like the way you care for your patients. You pray for your patients. You go the extra mile. You make me really proud. Hi, Sarah. My favorite thing about you is definitely a sense of humor. You make me laugh so much. You have been an inspiration to me and I'm so happy you're my sister. And I'm glad you're my daughter. I love you. You're so caring and hardworking and I feel your care for me. Love you. Love, love you. you. The day you came into my life, Sarah Grace, was like a breath of fresh air. And I'm so glad you are my daughter. I have had the opportunity to know you for two major turning points in your life and at each of those points um, you've proven yourself and uh, I'm glad that you are an inspiration and that you will continue to be an inspiration uh, to your niece. Sarah, we're sending you lots of love. We're so grateful to have you in our lives and we're so proud of you, your strength of character standing for the right even when it's hard to do so i know that's why i'm personally proud of you we love you very very much and we just pray that god will continue to enable you to have the adorning of the inner self the inner beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which is of great worth and precious in his sight you are precious in his sight and we love you <laughs> I. you were born being a doctor I could remember when your sister was sick. You usually run for the medication to medicate her. We have to be behind you so fast. And now you fulfill, you fulfill your dream of being a doctor. Rightfully so. We are so proud of you and all your accomplishments. And you've made the word impossible. It seems not a word to, for anyone to hope. The sky is the limit and you're reaching for it. Keep on doing what you're doing and keep on being the person you are with that magnetic vibes that pull people to you. 
and Sarah, you embodied every word in Ellen Reddy's song that says, I'm a woman. Sarah Grace, my sweet special niece. What a joy. What a joy to be greeting you, to be allowing all of Jamaica to know just how proud I am of you. Pearl, you have come a far way. Certainly a far way from that week we spent in Port Antonio, remember? Balling, praying, uncertain of what the future would hold for you. But here you are in that future and God has been faithful. He continues to bring to completion all that he birthed inside of you from way back then. So my dear sweet niece, I want you to know how proud I am of you. How proud I am of the wife, the mother, the professional that you are, the woman that you are still becoming. So remember, whatever happens, Auntie Grace always have your back. We celebrate the person that you are and the kind of love that you show to us all. A love that's very honest and caring and always desires the best from each of us. So we love you and we really appreciate the person that you are. God bless you. As parents, we are so proud of the lady you've grown to be. We admire your conscientious commitment to your family, your friends, and to our beloved country, Jamaica. We love you. Hi there, Mama. Mom, thanks for always being there for me and someone I can depend on. I don't know what I'd do without you and I love you. Thank you for being such an amazing wife, mother, friend, doctor, entrepreneur, public figure. There's just so many descriptions and superlatives that can be used to describe you. you know, I'm extremely proud of you, extremely proud to be your husband, extremely proud to be able to go on this journey of life with you and it's been just so wonderful, so rewarding and I guess I would say it's going exactly how God told me it would go and um, I just want to tie it off with just the fact that I love you very very much and in all of the, 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 the forms that, that love exists. <laughs> He's a keeper! <laughs> He's a keeper. Oh, you know, so I, I was like, okay, we're finishing up. I didn't cry. I come on <laughs> Simi's old session. I never cried. Check. God, oh, when God. you listen to Auntie Grace, that week you told me you spent in Porte, just hiding from the world because it got so loud. Um, and then you look now at where you are. What goes through your mind? Literally, the song that was on repeat coming here in traffic, that... Every moment that I have, I wait to sing to the goodness of God. Mm. Literally. I, what goes through my mind is that God good, in, when God good, God great. Mm. Trust me. Literally, I could not have done anything in my own strength. And to see how he has used everything and worked it out for his glory, I actually just feel honored to be able to be used by him. Good. And, and for my good. good. Okay, we thought we were going to tail it after this. Um, <laughs> soon come back. Dry your tears, lady. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we are back with you. Um, so now you're in your own practice, Sarah, which you say gives you immeasurable joy because you're able to speak to people who are in your position, not as a doctor, but also as a doctor, but from a place where you know yeah. where they have been. Not yeah. because you're here about it or you're about it, because you were there mm -hmm. and you're now here. Yeah. So you're a story that your bad days yeah. are not where you have to stay. There's more ahead. And it may not look the same way. You understand? My bad day or not so good day or not ideal day may not look like yours, but we're all going to have to push through it and we all have everything that we need to push through it. So sometimes you really need someone to be like, 
come on, you don't need to wallow in this space. You don't need to stay there. Sometimes you have to really, I don't want to say fake it till you make it because it seems um, cliche, but you have to move beyond there. Because mm -hmm. I would have already thought of myself as a doctor. I would have already thought of myself married and having a family and everything, even in the time when it should have been the worst you know so you have to really it's, it's an honor to be able to share in that way one-on-one -on -one with women every single day better is ahead all we really all we're trying to tell folks is that you know you may be in a situation as Sarah Grace Tomlin we're talking where you think your life is over but if you just keep putting one foot in front of the other better days are ahead definitely definitely I learned to trust this thing of time nothing Thing lasts forever Nothing. and you have to know it in the good times too mm -hmm. you know you have to enjoy it you have to love it up but appreciate it but know that when you're in the bad time you will reach a good time again yeah. so you have to make up your mind yeah. which space you're going to exist in I love that um, you told me you're happy for what you do because for most people or for the people who come to you you are the only piece of Jesus they see for some people every day what for does that some mean? people so I try my best and I'm not, I can't say I'm, I, I've accomplished this every single day, but because my life has been so seasoned with grace, I kind of make it my point of duty that no matter what's going on with me, no matter what I'm feeling, no matter what I'm going through, I just really come out strong with love. Mm -hmm. And because that love that God shows me is unconditional and because I was, I grew up in a family, I grew up in and I kind of got the opportunity through my foundation and then also my experiences with my now church transform life church to get relationship with God some people don't have that mm -hmm. they just don't for whatever reason but they can get a taste of that undiluted unjudgmental non-judgmental love through interactions with me mm -hmm. and I try my best to do that as much as possible and even if it's just a glimmer I don't want them to see me and say, oh, she's nice. It's more like, why? She, you know, God really doing him thing. Let me try out that God thing. That's why you now consider your work ministry. It is absolutely 100% my ministry. And I'm actually at a point now, because it will be one year in since um, I practice one year and some months privately. And things are getting busy and so, but I have to always think about recentering, getting back there, because it's about... A partnership with God and mm -hmm. what He wants to do through me. Mm -hmm. It's success not about success. Is causing you a little bit of imbalance. Not even success. It's just time management mm -hmm. and so on. Life get busy and you're trying to balance family and the patience and the this and the that and the demands and everything. But I truly cannot do it without Him. Mm -hmm. um, so it really just requires being centered, starting off your day, putting in that one-on-one -on -one time with Him, so He can instruct every single step along the way. There is somebody watching now who, a woman who just found out she's pregnant at a quote-unquote inconvenient time. Mm. Somebody who's met upon another inconvenient obstacle. Mm -hmm. The timing is wrong. They think it's over. It's done. I'll never get past this. I want mm. your word mm. to them to be the last word before our affirmation. Okay. So... I, I would love to make it a bigger picture, yeah. not just the pregnancy picture, sure. because Whatever every single is. one of us will face an obstacle where we're like, all right, this is it. Feelings are not the truth. They're not reality. Facts. They're not facts. Mm -hmm. That's the word I was looking for. They're not facts. They're feelings. So what I would encourage you to do, you'd have to pull out of that situation, whether it's emotionally, physically, go pour it down, go sit down, whatever it is and get some perspective. What, is, what you're going through right now, it will not be the same tomorrow, it will not be the week after that, a year after that, a month after that. So even the, the, the minute view of knowing that you're not gonna be right here tomorrow, you're just gonna take it one step at a time. But you're gonna super un, imp, un, impose on top of that fact that you won't be the same where you were today, tomorrow, and know that something beautiful can come from this and all of a sudden you're getting excited. It don't even make sense. <laughs> because you turned around within moments, like your emotions just became schizophrenic. You were at the end of it all and you just start all of a sudden getting filled with hope. So literally, I want you to just always remember that your feelings are not facts. You may be overwhelmed right now, but you need to pull yourself out of the situation, know that you're gonna progress in a beautiful way, and know that at the end of that road, 
that one thing that was probably the worst thing you ever experienced could become the most beautiful thing in your life and others' lives around you. Yep, yep. and her beautiful family is there to attest that your son is beautiful, your mm. daughter is beautiful, your husband is beautiful, your family is beautiful. <laughs> um, Sarah Grace, I can't thank you enough for coming and sitting in this chair and for opening up the way you have. I, I thank you from the bottom of my heart because I know you've changed a lot of lives tonight. So thank you and keep making your test, your testimony, girl, and your, yeah. your quote unquote mess, your message, because boy, God is good. Thank you so he much is. for being here. Thank you for having me. All right, affirmation time, everybody. Let's lead our show. Okay, so we have a saying in Jamaica, when a dad, when a dead, no dash away. We have a way where we see someone fall down and instead of helping them up or wishing them well, we pile on, kicking them when they're down. And many times, those kicking have so many secrets and skeletons, but they still have hand for true stone. We thank God for strength of character, for support of loved ones, for God's grace and for sheer will. For if it weren't for some of those things, none of us would still be here. Not one of us. So how about we stop writing people off when life knocks them down and instead love them up so they can get up and come back stronger. We would want that for ourselves. The truth is that a good crisis is never wasted if we take the lesson from it. And some of the greatest blessings come disguised as life's greatest challenges. But in those moments, we find ourselves, our mission, and very often our purpose, and we become the vessel that pours into others to help them avert these crises in their own lives, or help them realize it's not the end of the world if they do run into problems. There is life after rough situations, and it can be even better on the back end than it was before. So tonight we are affirming Here's our affirmation for tonight. I will look past my bad days knowing that better days are ahead. That is our show for this evening and our soul food. Thank you for watching. We will be back next week with another story of the power of the human spirit. Until then, every blessing. And please remember to count your blessings. Night, everybody.